week's episode of Running Wild, we're going to be looking at animals from the sea and the sky. We'll be looking at animals such as the Humboldt penguin to the rhinoceros hornbill. But first, we'll take to the skies and have a look at the lorikeets. Here I am at the lorikeet enclosure with these beautiful Australian birds are looked after. They're a very special type of parrot due to their unique looks which makes them distinguishable from other parrots. These birds are native to the Asian Australian region in countries like Polynesia, Timor and Australia. Lorikeets live in coastal regions where the forest is thicker so they can live among the trees for safety. They live on a diet of mainly nectar and pollen from flowers and will often eat berries and fruits if they really need to. As you can see, these birds are very small and weigh between 75 to 150 grams. As well as just for looking pretty, their rainbow feathers help to blend in with the flowers so they are near enough impossible to be seen by any predator. The lorikeet's breeding season is still mysterious to many people who wish to study these birds. They are known to mate during September and December, however there is not much research to support this fact. Once they lay an egg, they will incubate it for 25 days before the chick cracks out of its shell. These pretty parrots are certainly one of a kind, and with Jesus' affection and a huge enclosure to explore, they are certainly happy. Now let's take a trip back in time to the rhinoceros hornbill. These beautiful creatures are known to have the most in common with dinosaurs due to their rhino-like horn just above their beak. The male's horn is usually bigger than the female's, but the only true way of telling the difference between males and females is by looking into their eyes. The male's eyes will be red, whereas the female's will be white. Once fully matured, the hornbill is able to grow anywhere between 75 to 90 centimetres lengthwise. Their wingspan can also reach an outstanding five feet, which makes it the biggest bird out of the hornbill family. These types of hornbills can usually weigh between two to three kilograms, which is twice the weight of most hornbills. Surprisingly, this hornbill was very healthy, despite its unusual weight. Its diet mainly consists of fruits and nuts, but they will also have the occasional meat, such as a small rodent, but only if it is really hungry. When the hornbills are ready to mate, the females will lay three or so eggs. Before laying these eggs, they'll have to go out and find a suitable nesting area, preferably in higher trees, where they can hide their youngling. They will also have to find a place where it is easy to spot predators from a fair distance away, so the parents are able to take action and deal with the predator before it reaches their hatchling. Once the eggs have been laid into the nesting area, it will usually take 39 to 45 days for them to hatch. The rhinoceros hornbill is very unique compared to the rest of the birds in the hornbill family and their rhino-shaped beak is definitely their most eye-catching feature. For our first animal of the sea, we're here at the penguin enclosure where we'll be looking at the Humboldt penguins. These beautiful penguins can grow up to 70 centimetres in height and weigh between 3.6 to 5.9 kilograms. Originating from South America, Humboldt penguin colonies are often spotted along the Pacific coast, breeding between Peru and Chile. Unlike other penguins, the Humboldt penguin enjoys a warmer climate and prefers to nest on rocky coasts or burrow in caves where they feel safer. Humboldt penguins live on a diet of small fish and have adapted to having spines on their tongue to ensure grip on their prey. In the water, these penguins can reach a total of 20 miles per hour and have excellent eyesight both in and out of the water. Even though they spend the majority of their time in the sea, the double layer of feathers covering their body keeps the water from reaching their skin. To keep the feathers in good condition, the penguins preen them often and molt for 10 days around August time to get that fresh coat look. It's estimated that there are about 3,000 to 12,000 of these beautiful creatures left in the world, a number which might sound a lot, but really isn't. In fact, the Humboldt penguins are now classed as endangered due to the destruction of the habitat and interruption to the food chain due to fishing. These specific penguins are some of the lucky ones as they are being looked after here in a safe environment at Colchester Zoo. 
penguins usually live for about 20 years, but when kept in captivity, they can survive for 10 more years. This leaves us questioning the, the safety of their current environment. On a more positive note, Humboldt penguins are master hunters and have adapted to their environment in remarkable ways. Let's dive deeper and take a look at the Patagonian sea lions. These ravishing animals are found along the South American coast, especially near Chile and Peru, just like the Humboldt penguins. This animal will eat various types of fish, such as anchovies and hake, and often octopus and squid. If they are desperate, they will go to long lengths to hunt penguins, which are captured and then violently ripped apart. This sea lion will go out for five miles or more offshore to find food, as if they do not go out, they will become prey themselves to killer whales and sharks. They can also reach a depth of 600 feet underwater and can survive without oxygen for 40 minutes. As you can see, they have adapted well to life on land and sea as they have thick skin to protect them from the sharp rocks and good eyesight for detecting prey underwater. Patagonian sea lions are considered to be called mammals, meaning the females will produce milk and give birth to pups. The mating season for these sea lions is between August and December, and after giving birth they will try to mate again for the offspring, which means they can only care for their young for the first year of their life. The population for the sea lion is about 200,000, which is quite a low number surprisingly. This number is continuing to drop due to destruction of their habitat and hunting by humans. To put a stop to this issue, Colchester Zoo supports conservation efforts and collects donations towards helping these beautiful creatures. Last but not least, we're going to take a sneak peek at the sneak post otter. This creature is found in the Himalayas and grows to a length of 1.3 meters, weighing 7 to 11 kilograms. These otters become independent at one year old, then reach sexual maturity at two. Reproduction for this type of otter is yearly based and after the gestation period of 61 to 65 days, two to five cubs are born. Smooth-coated otters are omnivores, meaning they will eat other plants and fish. This includes things like insects, water rats, birds, fish and more. The life expectancy of a smooth-coated otter in captivity is 20 or so years, but in the wild they can only live up to 4 to 10 years. The conservational status of the otter is currently vulnerable since animals such as various crocodile species are predator to the smooth-coated otter. This creature is very precious and rules the environment that they live in. The smooth-coated otter is remarkable. As you can see, these majestic animals are a huge attraction to the zoo, as the way they have adapted continues to amaze visitors. There's plenty more to be explored of these animals, however that's all we have time for today. Join us next week when we'll be exploring lions, tigers and leopards for the carnivore episode. Thank you for watching and have a good day.